Well hi folks, I'll just give you a quick fortnightly roundup again. I've forgotten my me, me video camera so I'm doing it on my phone so it's going to be a bit of a juddery one this unfortunately. I'll just start off with the marrows. It's been growing well, we've had some really strong winds but they're getting to about 10 foot long now. So another two weeks maybe if I can get a fruit set about 12 or 13 feet from the, from the start there should be a decent plant behind it. We might get a bigger, I've put all this just stupid stuff around just to keep the wind off hopefully all the little bits of wind breaks and stuff I've just sort of stacked them all around it and it seems to have done the trick because they're both there one at either end of the bed growing towards each other so we'll see uh, which one grows the biggest marrow um, the onions I did like I say with the wind they've been battered absolutely battered a few have blown right over so when the necks blow over that's it you just need to pull them up because they stop growing but it's no big deal no big deal at all the kale Kale's growing, I've been actually picking it now, if you can see the size of it already, it's such a wonder crop. Doesn't seem to be bothered by cabbage white butterflies or anything, because I'm not covering it up and I don't get any caterpillars on it, so... Why they don't seem to like that, I don't know, but it's good, it's a lot easier than netting it up. The leeks, they've taken now, could do with a bit of a weeding, like everything does every now and again, but they've all taken, they've rooted in the holes. And the weeds have uh, grown in amongst them. So we'll do it this way around for a change. Right, these are the potatoes, as you can see, absolutely huge now. They're the first earlies there, and some of the sarpos behind, all in full flower. So they should have potatoes forming now. But the sarpos will grow till October time, until the frost get them, really, because they're not affected by the blight. Just giving them a good water, and even though it's been raining, it doesn't put enough down to, to water pots. So I've given them a good couple of gallons each. These are the uh, Jerusalem artichokes up to about chin height now same thing with those they're sucking loads of water out so I'm giving those a good old water in excuse me lettuces are getting through them now only got about three left from the first batch and they're the second lot coming now so in about a week a week or two's time when they're finished my second lot should be ready the banana shallots just starting to grow a bit now but again they got a good old pummeling by the wind the other day it's not the greatest sort of leaves to be standing up to gale force winds, but not a lot you can do. The spring onions just about ready now, I think, some of them. A little bit small, but it won't be too long. They're nearly as thick as my little finger, some of them, so not far off. Not far off. Garlic still growing, no rust yet. Getting thicker and thicker, so hopefully should have some decent uh, bulbs underneath. The peas just started to flower now, and then we've got a few pods on. So maybe another week and we should have a good crop of those. There's plenty more around this side. This is where all the flowers are, if you can see. So after a bit of a pathetic start with them, not start not growing and not germinating in the gutters and stuff. It's not so bad so far now. But it's the only crop I'm gonna get this year because I didn't sow a second crop. Well I did sow a second crop, sorry, but the mice ate it all. I direct sowed it and the mouse the mice dug them all up. So there you go. These are the savoys. I think we've had a bit of slug damage with all the rain because they must have been hiding all the slugs with no rain for about a month and as soon as it rained they just came out in abundance so we'll see how they get on that's all you can do red cabbages as usual right we'll nip a tip polytunnel and i'll show you the last bit in there i'm just going to rush through this so we'll finish in the polytunnel as usual i'll just start at this side first sorry for the shakiness it's this camera it's not very good the courgettes just coming now, absolutely loads at a time, so I've been taking those. Absolutely just crazy plants, these in the greenhouse, in the polytunnel, sorry. Got a couple more cucumbers go on the go there. A little ugly uh, ridge one called Market Moor, and a, one of the longer ones called Femme Spot or something, I think it's called. The French beans now way up to the roof. We've got some beans on as well which I need to be taking, if you can see. Starting to get beans from the bottom and they're just coming all the way up now. All the way up. Even some halfway up, so like I said, cobra beans, you can't beat them, absolutely fantastic. Some more of the giant tomatoes. <laughs> the short stump carrots now. I don't know what about these this year, whether they'll do anything. They've gone so leggy. And they're not looking the darkest green of colour, so I don't know, we'll see. I'm not that bothered because I'm not doing a lot of shows this year. Maybe just for my local one and 
it's not for any national ones or anything because you need to be more set up than I've got for that these days likewise with the long carrots they should be all right they'll look good at a local show hopefully right the giant tomatoes growing really big now and putting on some of these mega blooms which I will try and find one somewhere don't know how close this camera zooms but if you can see that there that is one tomato flower look at the size of that and if you can see it's all like a multiple of different flowers all mashed up that's what you want a mega bloom I'd show you underneath with the other camera but this doesn't focus there's about four five six tomatoes all stuck together underneath that and bear in mind that they all that they're all beef tomatoes that's how you get these giant ones so like I said there's about four or five tomatoes all stuck together under there which will form one giant tomato hopefully <laughs> so I'm just going to grow that one tomato on one plant daft as it sounds just for just to see how it gets on and we've got a few more coming on these as you can see you get the odd giant flower appearing and they're the ones you want to try and pollinate like that one's a giant one because you can see it's got about three stalks together so it's just a laugh just something funny to do and it's good fun watching them grow giant carrots plenty of tops on what's underneath I don't know but I've had a mouse making a nest every night down there don't know where it's been going it's digging it out I fill it in it digs it out I fill it in I put mouse traps around it so I'm just leaving it now and it's just not got any worse so <laughs> live with them don't try and kill them because if you keep digging it up it might just dig a great big hole through one of my carrots right um, finally what we got finally oh yeah the onions I'll show you from around here but steadily ticking away growing about an inch a week now in circumference that's the biggest one the one near the door, the closest one, if I get my hand in. We're getting on for 21 inches in circumference now. I reckon I need about 26 inches, 26 and a half to get a 10 pounder. So they're doing 7 eighths of an inch a week. So I need about 6 or 7 weeks worth at that rate. Which takes me to the end of August, which is touch and go. But we'll see. It's just a matter of keeping them growing really. They've got plenty of leaves on still. That was the other big one. That's my second biggest, I think. And I found a new second biggest one. I think that was it there. No, one of these. And that's the one you want because they've got a tall shape. So they weigh more for the circumference than a, a flat one. So all in all, not too bad. Just ticking over. It's going to be close again. Whether I get a 10 pounder or not, we'll see in about six or seven weeks time. If they're still growing, then I should have one. If they're not, then I'll be disappointed again. Anyway, that's about it, folks. So just a quick rush around. I won't do a long video this time because I'm too busy. And this camera's rubbish. It's all juddery. So that's about it, folks. So it stopped raining for once. See you later. Here we are. Put the greenhouse. I forgot to say I was going to go up to the greenhouse. Last thing. It's about nine o'clock at night now, so it's it's going a bit dark. So I'll just show you what's going on. Another one of these little um, what do you call market more cucumbers? I grew them really late. These, but they seem to be ticking away slowly. They only grow the little short stumpy cucumbers, but they're dead tasty. They're, I think they're called Market More, or they used to be called Burpless Tasty Green because they didn't make you, they didn't give you indigestion apparently. Now I was trying one of these asparagus chilies, which are supposed to be the longest chilies in the world, and look at the state of it. It's just not grown at all. No flowers, no size to it, so it's a bit of a, a non-starter this year. Unless they come really late, but I was hoping to get some of those really daft long chilies, but. I suppose you must have to start them off really early. The little bush tomatoes are doing well now. That's the one that's a little bit further behind this one. It's just falling over. There's tomatoes everywhere. They just just keeps growing and growing and growing. So uh, they're good days. They just keep throwing out more side shoots, and you just leave them to go, and they just they make little cherry-sized tomatoes like that by the hundreds, by the looks of it. My cucumber. There you go. I told you I was the worst cucumber grower. I think it's got some kind of virus now, a mosaic virus, which is transmitted by uh, green fly. If you look at the leaves now, they've got this this colour to them, like a mosaic thing, which is a, a sure sign it's got some kind of disease. And there don't seem to be any more cucumbers coming. So I've got three really good ones. Unless there's one. The ones that have come, look, they've just sort of all shriveled up and died. So. I told you I was crap at cucumbers and that just goes to prove it.
But these oxhorn peppers, like I said, dead easy to grow. Longhorn by the name, they just keep growing that sort of shape but bigger. And you must get 20 or 30 on a plant. Like last year I did, I got tons, so that's why I've grown a lot more this year. And they're like a, a very sweet pepper. Another one there, that's a different variety, but there's nothing on that yet. There's a few flowers forming, that's a really tall thing. And then your general bog standard sweet bell peppers, little bell peppers, I'll show you the size of those. Not too big at all, but they'll grow out a bit and hopefully if we get a bit of sunshine they might even turn red, ripen up to red. The wars with the gardener's delight still continue. I think that's some kind of weed killer or something. There's something going on with that. So uh, I don't think I'll even bother eating that one, any of those. The Shirley's, they're looking too okay now. Getting some nice trusses on all the way up. I've nipped them off at the top because they've reached the greenhouse top now. I've got five trusses on. That's about all I can manage to get to ripen by about September time if we're lucky enough to keep them growing. So that's about it. Greenhouse done. That's about how things stand at it's about, what's the date now? First week in July. Right, that's about it folks. I'll see you again later. I'll see you.